Hello and happy Thursday, or as I like to say, happy Friday Eve. I'm Coy Wire. This is CNN 10, and I'm here to fuel your mind and get you caught up on the latest news from around the world without all the extra stuff. Just all you and me and your news in 10 minutes time. We're going to start with our headlines today and the latest update on MPOX, formerly known as monkeypox. This infectious disease can cause painful rashes, fevers, and headaches, and can even be deadly. African nations could begin vaccination against MPOX within days, according to the continent's top public health agency. The Democratic Republic of the Congo, or DRC, is currently at the center of an MPOX outbreak. Just last week, the World Health Organization declared the situation a global health emergency. The more dangerous strain, which is spreading rapidly in the DRC, can be easily transmitted between people and from infected animals through close contact. Since the start of the year, the continent has reported nearly 19,000 cases, an increase of more than 100% compared to the same period last year. And the U.S. is continuing ceasefire discussions between Israel and Hamas in regard to the war in the Middle East. Officials are trying to hammer out final details of a potential agreement between Hamas and Israel as the leader of the Iranian Armed Forces warns that Iran will punish Israel in due time and place. Secretary of State Antony J. Blinken traveled to Israel, Egypt, and Qatar as part of a larger trip to push for a ceasefire deal. Next up, New data just released is showing that job growth in the U.S. over the past year was not as strong as once thought. The Bureau of Labor Statistics did an annual review of its employment data and found that there were 818,000 fewer jobs in March of this year than were initially reported. Spread out over the course of last year, that would be about 68,000 fewer jobs per month. The Bureau conducts this review every year, and the estimates are still preliminary. They won't be finalized until next year, but right now, economists are looking at these numbers as a critical gauge for the U.S. labor market and overall health of the economy. Job growth dropping off more than expected in recent months is something the Federal Reserve will be watching closely as it weighs interest rate cuts, a key factor for inflation. Pop quiz, hot shot. What's the biggest section of a group of instruments in an orchestra with the largest number of musicians? Woodwind, string, percussion, or brass? The strings make up the biggest section of an orchestra. They include the violin, viola, cello, double bass, and harp. There are a few things in life that unite us quite like music, and one man is using that power to bring together a group of more than 300 people of more than 25 nationalities who speak 20 different languages. The aim? Create an orchestra unlike any other. Our CNN hero, conductor Ron Davis Alvarez, is changing the lives of refugees one musical arrangement at a time. An orchestra is like a community different people, different voices, different melodies. Everybody has their own role and they all connect to each other. The violin listens the cellos and the cellos hear trumpets. Imagine if the world worked more like an orchestra. We would have a better world for sure. I was born in Caracas, Venezuela. I fell in love with music from my first class when I was 10. I went to the university, studying conducting there, and I was working around Venezuela and around the world to teach orchestras and programs. And that's how I came to Sweden. I came in 2015 and there was arriving so many refugees and asylum seekers. They were like completely lost. Music changed my life. I knew that. I know that. So in this moment, I know one solution. Dream Orchestra is open for anyone who wants to learn an instrument, especially families who are arriving to Sweden. Up, 
down. Can we try? Down. Down. We teach different instruments at the same time and we have from the very small kids to adults. And it's an orchestra where the main language is music. Kids, parents, youth, more than 20 languages and more than 25 nationalities. And kids who born here, we all need to learn from each other. My life is dream orchestra. I feel thankful to have them in my life, that we can play music together and help each other. Next in our CNN 10 Olympian series this week is Team USA track and field superstar Gabby Thomas. She's not just quick on her feet, being one of the fastest women in the world, winning three gold medals in Paris, she's also locked into her studies and personal growth. She graduated from Harvard with a degree in neurobiology, then a master's in public policy from the University of Texas. I asked her all about her incredible journey and all about her pug back home that she just can't wait to see. So you finally got that gold, but not just a gold. <laughs> How are you feeling right now? I feel like on top of the moon right now. I mean, this Olympics was a dream come true for me. Uh, I got to participate in every event that I wanted to run in, and, and we got the job done, so I'm ecstatic. And not just participate. Yeah. I mean, you blew the field away. <laughs> I mean, were you expecting that? Um, you know, you can never really expect to do that, you know, at this level, at this level, because everyone is so talented and incredible at what they do. But I do know I've been training for years for this moment, and so I really took advantage of that. Now, neurobiology degree from Harvard, master's from UT in public health, and by the way, you volunteer <laughs> at a hospital. I mean, how powerful is the human mind? It really is powerful, and I learned that in college. Um, I have a really strong foundation on that, and that was one of the reasons why I wanted to pursue neurobiology as my major. And having that deep understanding of it, I think, has really helped me in my track career as well, because I understand what it takes to get to this level. I understand the mindset. I understand all of those little things that make a big difference. Mm -hmm. And the mindset is a difference between, you know, being on the podium and not. Incredible. Now, it's true that your mom, like, has to watch the races alone. <laughs> And did she do it this time? Because yeah. this would, would never be the one you want to miss. <laughs> oh, my goodness. My mom gets so nervous for these races. She's more nervous than I am. So she does not like being around people. She really does not even like being in the stands because she gets so nervous. So she did actually do that for the 4x4. She was in the comfort of family at the, at the <laughs> hospitality. But it, it makes her more comfortable to do it that way. And what was it like having fans in general around this time, giving you all that hype? Oh my goodness, it was amazing. I remember back in the fall, I was shooting a commercial with Toyota and they had um, all of my family kind of in the shoot mm -hmm. and they were celebrating this moment and kind of manifesting this moment for me. And it was exactly like that. It's like they had envisioned it and it came true in this moment and it was incredible. I couldn't have imagined how amazing it would it feel to, to share these special moments with them. How badly do you miss your fur baby, your pug Rico back home? I cannot wait to see Rico. I think that's <laughs> one of the first things I thought about when I finished. I was like, okay, I've done the job. Now I get to go home and hang out with my puppy. Today's story getting a 10 out of 10 is for anyone who had confused robot taxi on their bingo card. That's what some sleep deprived San Francisco residents say has been keeping them up at night for weeks. The racket that's keeping them up is from honking driverless taxis that have been returning from picking up fares to a neighboring parking lot. They just seem to be getting confused. Then it happened again and again. And I started thinking, well, this is an issue. Now, Waymo, the company that makes these driverless taxis, says they are working on a solution to what's making these taxis keep honking at each other day and night. It'll be a fix that can't come soon enough for all the sleep-deprived neighbors nearby. All right, superstars, now it's time for our favorite part of the day. We're giving a special shout out to Somerset Academy Lone Mountain in Las Vegas, Nevada. What's up, Mr. Foster's class? Thanks to you and to all of you for making us part of your day. Tomorrow's Friday, so let's lock in and finish this week strong. I'm Coy Wire, and we are CNN 10. <laughs> <laughs>